So um, our two workshops, the first one was about learning for health and industry 4.0 and the second work workshop, workshop 4, was about interaction and visualization. So here is the team who participated in the, uh, in the workshop and also in the um, discussions later. We have the names and a great photo. And there were three uh, topics uh, that what was identified and then discussed in three groups. So the first one was about full body interactions. The second one was about scenarios, and the third one was about multi-user interactions. So here are the mind maps for each of the these three topics. So I uh, will uh, let David yes, Philippe. present. Is it Philippe? Sorry. Sorry. Uh, no, I will try to explain you what uh, what is a mind map that I, I was not completely involved in the group. So I, I will try to interpret with, uh, with you the, the result of the, the work. Um, so uh, full body interaction, uh, I think the most important word is uh, uh, obviously uh, uh, full. Uh, and uh, uh, what does it mean? It, it means uh, that we have to work a lot to all uh, 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 interacting uh, the rest of our body, not just uh, our ears and uh, eyes. Uh, it uh, means that uh, we have a, a lot of uh, challenge to, uh, <coughs> to, to, to solve, uh, especially uh, a problem of uh, accuracy and, and precision. It, it's strange to, to, to have a, a mind map uh, uh, in a shape of a tree. Uh, it should be a, a graph or a network. <laughs> so we have uh, non-verbal communication here and non-verbal communication here, which is a very important topic. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, um, uh, of course, uh, full body interaction uh, raises the problem of uh, representation, representation of the world, of the other, and ourselves. It's strange to see that the group have decided to, to separate others and uh, ourselves. Uh, it should be the same. But uh, we see that interaction is uh, obviously a communication between me and, uh, and the rest of the world. It means the other. So should we represent the, the other differently from myself? Uh, it's, a, <laughs> it's, a, it's a good question. The other important uh, word for me is why. Why should we uh, um, uh, have a full body interaction? Uh, it should be a question of uh, choice and uh, driven by the goal. Uh, uh, here we have uh, uh, accuracy and uh, precision. It means uh, that we uh, are trying to reflect the reality and to have a, a, a perfect copy of uh, what we are and how we are interacting with uh, the world and with the other. But uh, uh, obviously, uh, we, we could decide, I've seen it somewhere, we could decide to have something very different and to uh, remove the part, a part of ourselves and in order to uh, work on uh, some aspect especially for training or uh, for uh, safety consolidation and, and so on. Uh, what is important for me also is non-verbal communication. Can we imagine a kind of Turing test where uh, uh, we could certify that uh, a system is very good if we are able to uh, transfer all the non-verbal communications? Um, if we imagine uh, a representation of ourselves as a copy, uh, an ex exact copy, you can imagine that a good accuracy will transmit non-verbal communication. But if we have a representation, which means an interpretation of what we are, on, of what we feel, or what we, uh, how we interact with the, uh, the world, uh, then the problem of non-verbal communication is important because it's something we uh, cannot objectively interpret. So if we interpret uh, something and we synthesis this, the non-verbal communication may be low. Okay? Just an overview of what we have done. All right. Thanks, Philippe. Thank you very much.
So we will move, we will move this to the second topic about scenarios. I will be presenting that actually. So we have discussed scenarios for um, for a long time. So we have identified the subtopics of uh, this problematic. So the first one was about um, the creation of the scenario. So in a virtual reality environment, it's important to create a scenario for, for training, for example, or for uh, anything. So uh, the question was uh, how to create this scenario. So we have discussed two uh, possible ways to do that. Generation, I mean automated generation or design. So designed by uh, someone. Uh, so we have discussed, uh, for example, defining a new grammar to, uh, to, to allow uh, the generation or the creation of the scenario. And we have discussed also uh, the ways to editing the scenarios by uh, the creator himself or by the others. We have also discussed the, uh, uh, the characters. So uh, the persons uh, who will interact inside the virtual environment, so that these could be users, so uh, persons interacting in the virtual environment, or these can be also uh, non-player characters. So what is important for a scenario is the role this, uh, these characters will have in this scenario. So the roles, uh, we have discussed the way the roles are distributed, and also uh, how um, they are represented. We uh, also discussed the, uh, the application domain for uh, the scenario. So what is important here is the, the tasks the, uh, the users will have to do inside this scenario. And also uh, the notion of gam gamification, uh, uh, most importantly for the, uh, the learning or training systems. We have also discussed uh, an important issue, which is the fidelity of the scenario from different perspectives. The physical world's uh, fidelity, the rules, uh, I mean, the, uh, the rules uh, inside the, uh, the, uh, the behavior of the, um, the characters, also of the environment, and also uh, introduction of the artificial intelligence to improve the, the fidelity of the scenario. And finally, uh, we have discussed the evaluation of the scenario from this different perspectives. So the assessment, whether the scenario was efficient for uh, the application domain, the, eval uh, the evaluation of the usability of the system from the user experience perspective, the feedback we need to give to the uh, users uh, during the, uh, the scenario and also the validation of the system, whether it's a training system, for example, or so on. So uh, that, this is like an overview of what we have discussed for the, the scenario issues. And now I will invite Jean-Yves to present the third topic we have discussed. So the last topic was about uh, multi-users uh, in virtual environment. So we subdivided it into five topics. One was about uh, the social relations and what can we do with it, for example, team building, teamwork. Uh, of course, uh, there were some issues about the communication, the verbal communication, but also the non-verbal communication. And uh, something that was also very uh, interesting about the behaviors. Uh, here, are, here are some bad, uh, some examples of bad behaviors, but we, we can also have uh, things like comforting using uh, uh, where you have several users that can be uh, able to, to comfort each other. Uh, we have also, um, I, I would say, it is a first cutting concern because uh, we have seen it previously about also the roles because when you have social relations, you have also several roles sometimes, uh, especially in learning, uh, where you have uh, instructors in training. So uh, this is it for the first uh, <coughs> subtopic. You have another subtopic which is related to interactions, but not only social relations, that, would be, that can be seen, also the interactions. 
but uh, issues uh, um, on human to human interactions, but also human to machine, and also uh, human to environment. Uh, because uh, you see, uh, it is possible for several users to be located in different places. And uh, one of the questions is uh, how these different uh, environments uh, will uh, alter the simulation. Um, so this is one of the issues that was brought up. Um, for the multi-user, I would say, scenarios, you have also some applications, of course, education, entertainment, uh, training, but also telepresence in order to be able to communicate uh, with people. And also one thing which is very interesting, uh, as we have seen, for example, in the previous presentation, which is uh, the content creation with uh, several users interacting uh, with each other in, uh, in the same uh, virtual reality environment. Another thing was about uh, the space and uh, the environment for multi-users. Uh, what about colocation, but also, for example, uh, what about uh, uh, public and private spaces, how can we share the public spaces, but also keep uh, something uh, apart from the others. And uh, here, mixed reality, for example, is bringing, uh, bringing out uh, some interesting answers. Um, another uh, topic, which is a single topic, is about avatars, uh, and it is about the self-representation, but also the representation of others but it is also, in fact, a cross-cutting concern. Thank you, Jari. So, as you can see, all the three topics are connected in several ways. So, the last step was to discuss our vision of these uh, topics in the recent, uh, in the past and present, the near future and uh, the far future. So, uh, our vision for the recent past and present is that the, uh, the technology were uh, still expensive, for example, for eye tracking, body skeleton tracking. We are missing also, we were missing also uh, the authoring, uh, scenario authoring tools for su supporting VR and AR uh, scenarios. We, uh, we have also steep learning curves and uh, simpl uh, usually we find uh, simplified user representation in multi-user system. For the present work and near future, uh, we uh, think that there is a democratization of VR and more affi affordable, higher quality hardware and software. Uh, at the same time, we think that there is an, a lack, still a lack of authoring uh, tools, uh, standardization, uh, uh, and there starts to uh, we start to see uh, user acceptance culture issues regarding the VR and AR systems. We also uh, see uh, the emergence of the natural user interactions and also the full body interaction permitted by the uh, the actor, actual. Uh, the current technologies. So our vision for the future is that uh, we will tend to the standardization of the tools. Uh, we think also there's a need for the uh, definition of a co code of uh, conduct, user gu guidelines and ethical issues in multi-user applications. Uh, we think also there's a new a universal VR, AR hardware interfaces that uh, will emerge we think that the full body multimodal remote human human interaction will be permitted uh, both for touch, uh, eye contact, emotions and so on. We think also that the multitasking consumption in VR and AR will be possible so persons will be able to do multitasks uh, in a VR environment. And finally we, we think that uh, Artificial intelligence-based higher fidelity scenarios will permit to have a more uh, realistic uh, virtual envir uh, environment uh, in the future. So that's all for us. Thank you. So next workshop is workshop number two. Okay, so
Donc, je rentre. Yes. So the second workshop talked about immersive collaborative innovations. Uh, we were 10 uh, eight people are in the picture. The two other are we're well, well not here for the for the picture. Um, we talk about uh, immersive collaborative innovation, and we start with uh, some uh, research questions. Uh, because according to uh, open innovation as a collective process, and uh, according we have to involve various stakeholders. Uh, we uh, we ask uh, uh, what could be a collective immersion or collaborative immersions. What are the current and next immersive collaborative environment challenges? What are the cognitive implications? How human-machine interactions support collaborative people interactions? And what kind of business model can support low-cost infrastructures? We talk about low-cost infrastructure because the objective is how to uh, spread innovations, how to spread virtual reality, uh, augmented reality, and generate new tools and devices uh, that <coughs> quite everybody can buy and use for every, uh, every image. Because uh, time is short and we are on turn, we uh, decided to focus on three topics. And the three topics are social aspects, economical aspects, and technological aspects. And I think, Max, you will present the yes. first topic. According to the World Café Technique, I was the uh, goalkeeper of that table, which is about the, about the uh, innovation, more or less related to the innovation process. So that's why you see there development, uh, training, uh, uh, operationalizing, and, and pre-sales, which is more or less uh, trying to foresee what are the uh, main important activities in the innovation process. And uh, around that, maybe we can turn to the Okay, so that's <laughs> at the end what we have got. So there you see the important aspect is social gathering within immersive and collaborative environments, where we have identified some hot topic like uh, wellness at work, because I mean, the, even if it is a kind of a virtual environment, uh, we, we have to have some comfort there. And also wellness at, at work, because we know that if people get stressed for any reason, we need to put in place the uh, proper therapy at work. So we, there we are quite creative. And therapy at work means that for some uh, uh, period of time, there could be some uh, activities like uh, sport, leisure, within the environment that people can distract themselves and uh, uh, in somehow cure the uh, level of stress. Uh, which is more or less related to the other aspect, which is the uh, human tolerance. Uh, you know about the uh, cognitive load, for example, that you get brain dead at the end of the exercise. So um, for that, we, we know that there are different aspects linked to the ergonomics or hedonic uh, aspect, how much you can uh, uh, work with some uh, devices, uh, like having a HMD, or just looking at the screen, which is totally different. And uh, also the link to the uh, training where people can uh, be immersed into a working uh, situation and, and then they can experiment how it works. Uh, another aspect is also to start looking at how much to design sequences and sequences where there are several people collaborating together. They are not necessarily using the same devices and uh, those devices might have some constraints and then designing the sequences means that you predefine how long you will have to do this and that, that uh, you get the minimum level of comfort to be able to do it. Uh, for the uh, simulation of a uh, working environment, that we have tried to identify some uh, links to the uh, worker's behavior. So we, we are not just staying as a kind of a tree structure, but we try to identify what also some uh, relationships among the uh, different uh, concepts there. We have uh, also been mentioning the uh, user experience and technology acceptance, like if you remember in the uh, humanizing the uh, digital world. 
And uh, we have also the link with the enhancement of uh, human <coughs> abilities, like thinking about the uh, social and emotional uh, intelligence, for example, uh, which is part of the uh, issues there. And also linked to uh, technology acceptance, also the uh, cyber sickness that, that would impact in somehow also the uh, level of tolerance. And finally, the uh, VR culture, the emergence of VR culture. So wherever humans go, because every time we have a new technology, we open doors to new environments. So there we bring ourselves in this new environment and we create a kind of a new culture. So that's also a fascinating topic. So nowadays, if we look at the uh, VR culture, it is for sure much more based on on gaming or serious gaming or some kind of uh, telepresence activities or things like this. But we can foresee that there is the emergence, some evidence of, of VR culture that is uh, uh, created. Where, for example, there is some kind of specific terms or vocabulary that we use, but also some kind of specific behavior depending on whether we do those activities as the first person, the third person, or embodied into an avatar, or things like this. So we are and somehow transforming ourselves in this kind of new environment. Okay, so I think uh, that's all we have been able to do in one hour and 30 minutes, <laughs> which is always a, an interesting challenge. So, okay. Thank you. So this is the second uh, topic, the economical aspect, and I will ask to uh, Sebastian and Hélène to make the same to us. Oh, yeah. Oh, three. Oh, and Gerard, sorry. <laughs> uh, well, so we... It's a huge topic, so we need three people. Yes, for this uh, economical part, we, we start also with uh, uh, a complicated uh, uh, map. So we try uh, after to uh, summarize uh, all that in, uh, in four parts. Uh, the, the first part was the uh, business part, uh, then the uh, application part, uh, the technical part, and the impact. Uh, Maybe we can start with the uh, technical part that is the less uh, uh, developed. Uh, we were focusing about, uh, um, about collaboration. So uh, uh, as it was mentioned, uh, large, scale, uh, large scale usage. Uh, so uh, as uh, hardware, software, and uh, platform uh, global solutions uh, that can be uh, uh, more and more developed and uh, widespread, the objective is to have uh, uh, some kind of uh, uh, AR, that is uh, AR, uh, VR, or MR in general, that is uh, widespread and uh, available everywhere and for uh, everybody. Uh, that means, uh, as you mentioned in, uh, in the previous talk, uh, some kind of autoware for uh, uh, every kind of, uh, uh, every kind of uh, expertise. Uh, from uh, child uh, to uh, uh, usual uh, people to uh, 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 geeks. <laughs> and uh, uh, then for the application part, uh, in terms of economics, we, uh, we try to find the, uh, the major teams uh, that were involved. Uh, we, uh, we group them in uh, health, industrial, uh, entertainment, and services. Uh, health, we talk about uh, well-being and uh, healthcare, uh, not developing uh, uh, much more. We have, uh, we have seen example uh, in uh, the presentation. Industries, uh, uh, mainly uh, training, uh, uh, prototyping, and uh, simulation. Um, as we have more the time, I don't uh, develop any, uh, any team. Entertainment also. Uh, we uh, uh, we talk about.
about uh, also a, a, renew a renewal about, uh, for example, uh, uh, the Cafe or Arcane Cafe, uh, of course, and, uh, and sports, and uh, services uh, in terms of, uh, uh, in term of uh, uh, collaborative, uh, there are services, uh, distance services, as for uh, uh, medical services, as for uh, uh, conseil services, but also uh, uh, more general services as you can uh, imagine and uh, also companions uh, being uh, virtual companions that uh, help you for uh, healthcare or for uh, for a game or uh, physical companions when you when you are together uh, working together um, so the business uh, the business uh, models and the business uh, uh, aspect uh, stakeholders are uh, much uh, changing uh, due to the uh, collaborative aspect of uh, of uh, AR, VR, uh, MR, <laughs> and uh, so uh, there are a lot of uh, stakeholders and game changers and new business models that will uh, go uh, uh, from a classical business model to uh, uh, some kind of platform in the layers, for example. Um, and then the last uh, of the four points uh, was uh, impact. Uh, we, uh, we split it in, in a positive impact, negative impact, and uh, an objective that is uh, uh, about uh, disappointment. And I don't know if I have uh, enough time uh, because. Uh, yes, you do. Yes, I can. So, uh, a positive impact of uh, these technologies is uh, save of time, money. Uh, you can go into uh, more details and personalize uh, uh, the world as you uh, as you need uh, for training, for example. Uh, you uh, you can of course uh, uh, experiment a critical scenario, uh, and win scenario, and have a better involvement uh, into uh, into a product. Uh, negative impact: you have uh, the addict addict uh, addictiveness, uh, physical impact. Uh, you can uh, lose the concept of reality, have a social dependency or social bullying. And uh, uh, to avoid disappointment, uh, we, uh, we uh, list uh, some criteria as, uh, as price, as you say, uh, for uh, uh, large public, is, uh, price, uh, the overall price is, uh, is uh, critical. Reliability, uh, different expectation and experience, the responsiveness and the reactivity of uh, this system. Uh, when you have a massive uh, game, uh, gaming, for example, or massive uh, AR, you have uh, it's, uh, it's uh, a point that have a large impact on infrastructure of uh, being internet and so on. Uh, fidelity, attractiveness, and uh, duration of use. Uh, that means uh, you, uh, you, you need to, uh, to be able to, uh, to play, for example, for uh, enough duration if you if you want to adopt these technologies. Okay, that's it. Uh, thank you, Gerald, for uh, these details. Uh, maybe I can do a quick summary of uh, what has uh, been said. Um, so here on that part, you have what we think might have an impact on, uh, on your uh, application or on your use case. Uh, here you have what we think is uh, the most uh, promising uh, what are the most promising areas regarding the applications. So we have health, industries, entertainment, and services. Uh, regarding the business side, we think um, these are the main stakeholders. So you might want to involve them while uh, making your application. Uh, regarding business models, there is a great book about which is called uh, Business Model Generation. So it's a bit generic, but you can find um, some of the models uh, used right now in the in different industries, so maybe uh, you can apply some of them to, uh, to your industry. Uh, and then on that side, um, with that red color, we have different things <coughs> Reg regarding things you want to focus on. Maybe you want to focus on uh, all of them, but, but it might be better to focus on one or two things, making sure you have um, all of them uh, applied uh, is, a, is a good practice. And then you absolutely want to avoid these negative effects. So of course we have uh, addictiveness, uh, social bullying, etc. 
And then here's kind of a checklist uh, that you that you might want to go through while making your application. So making sure making sure that the price is right. Uh, you know, it, it is attra somehow attractive to your, your to your end user, and uh, and some other things. So, so that's about it. And maybe Erin, do you want to add something? Yeah, so I, I think you just summed it up. Nice. That's another another piece of another people point of view and a global point of view. So I think. <laughs> Thank you. Very good. Thank you. To conclude this workshop, we talk about uh, the technological aspect. Uh, this is our raw material, and we uh, develop uh, a big mind map. Uh, as you can see, uh, we make the link with the economical aspect you have already uh, present, and the social gathering within an uh, immersive collaborative environment. For the technological uh, uh, aspect, we focus on four uh, specific uh, points. The two first are advantages. We, we identify some uh, purpose, uh, possible purpose behind the, the, the fact that we develop technologies uh, supporting uh, immersive collaborative environment. And uh, for example, we, we want to generate proximity, uh, we want to co-create and innovate, etc. etc. And uh, the, the, the most important point uh, uh, or topic, uh, subtopic of this. Uh, of the, oh sorry, of the technological aspect uh, was the technical uh, material uh, because we, we know uh, there are strong evolutions uh, with the technology, we know there are a lot of devices, so we need to uh, think about the interoperability, uh, we need to connect old technology and new technologies. Uh, we, we have to, uh, to support uh, uh, new network developments or new infrastructure like uh, 5G, uh, 6G. Uh, we know that data security is an important uh, topic uh, due to the, uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the personal life and the cyber war. Uh, we have also to uh, make interactions or interconnect uh, uh, AR and AR and VR platform, and um, finally we also make the link uh, at the bottom uh, with the users because we, we think it's necessary to validate uh, all the, the, the technologies by, by the user. The two other points are the constraints and the solutions. Uh, as constraints, we, we know we, uh, we need to avoid four barriers. Uh, the the, the barrier, uh, this is a barrier against the collaborations. We need to, uh, uh, to, to make links uh, between uh, people uh, dis uh, geographically distributed or uh, temporally distributed. We uh, also need to uh, avoid a conceptual barrier uh, or make uh, elements or generate technology to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to permit people to understand uh, each other and to, um, to generate confidence between people. Because if we want to generate collaborations, we have to, uh, to develop confidence, confidence to the technologies and confidence between people. We also uh, consider the fact uh, it's necessary to develop technology for the five senses. Uh, just before we talk about the, the full body uh, uh, Immersions, for example, so we need, uh, uh, it could be very relevant uh, to, uh, to, uh, to have new, new technologies to, uh, to, to, to generate full uh, collective immersions uh, with, uh, with full body. Uh, we also have the flow as an important constraint, uh, and the objective is to reduce uh, latency and to uh, generate more spontaneity uh, between uh, stakeholders. Some solutions, uh, I think we have already uh, talked about that just before. For example, we, we could develop uh, VR conferences uh, or World VR Cafe challenges. Uh, for example, this week uh, we, uh, the, the VRIC conference uh, was uh, uh, sub submit the slides, <coughs> so maybe you can imagine for the next editions uh, 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 a VR room where we can uh, add or collect from the, the other countries or the other cities in France uh, 
uh, we, we are not able to join us. Um, and the other aspect, it spreads com content skills uh, because we, uh, we know uh, we have to, to work on uh, the, the skills of so the, the young people and the, the older people because uh, this new technologies need uh, competencies and, uh, and entertainment uh, and uh, training. Sorry. And uh, to uh, to make the link with the, with the exhibitions, uh, I can uh, uh, I can show you some pictures uh, from uh, Alex, uh, who uh, visit uh, quite all the, the exhibitions, and uh, Alex try to find. Uh, uh, different uh, startups uh, or, or companies uh, who uh, generate uh, uh, immersive uh, collaborative environment. And uh, as we conclude uh, this evening, uh, the, the last evening, uh, for the moment, it's not so uh, uh, efficient. So we know it's necessary to uh, to uh, to strengthen this uh, this topic and to work with companies and uh, academics to uh, to to really develop collaborative dimensions and immersions because uh, in, in fact uh, we, we, uh, we observe we are able to generate immersions but in reality it's not so easy to uh, generate collaborations uh, in the VR environment or ER environment. And to develop this aspect we think we have to, uh, to, uh, to develop the scientific approach and uh, for example, we have two questions. How can we certify the validity of the experiment? How we really experiment what we want to experiment? So we know uh, when we work on uh, virtuality, uh, as we, we that was presented before, uh, we, we need to, 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 to be very uh, careful and uh, we have to, uh, to adopt a scientific approach uh, with specific evaluations of user experience, collaborative experience, massive experience, etc., etc., to uh, to validate or to to show it's impossible to develop uh, this kind of approach. So thank you very much. Uh, for <laughs> we have a third uh, workshop. Yes, but right. I don't know. Yeah, Who is right. presenting for this? Nice. How is everybody? Are you still awake? Yeah. 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 Oh, okay, good. <laughs> then I get energy again, so that's good. So, um, thank you for staying. Um, we had a very organic process, I have to say, and we mostly used the morning um, for uh, workshop number three, which was called Virtualism uh, Symposium, which we didn't quite understand what it meant, uh, but that was fine. It's a good start not knowing what things mean, because then you can actually have an exchange. So um, we had a morning with uh, a lot of very different presentations. Um, so there were people from art, there were people from technology, there were people from science. So there was a very interdisciplinary, fragmented collection <laughs> of completely different subject matters. But we did seem to somehow have something in common. Uh, first of all, that we were in the same room, um, but also an honest uh, interest in the other. Uh, I thought that the general uh, uh, vibe in our conversation was very open and interested. And I think that it's very important because when you are talking about an interdisciplinary dialogue, especially under pressure of only having an hour and a half, yeah. um, you know, you need to be open and really be able to listen to the other and be interested and not only want to make your own point, which happens a lot, especially when you involve artists. <laughs> um, <laughs> I just look at myself. Um, actually, uh, you, you I, here I'm on the back trying to sort of negotiate the, the conversation a little bit. Uh, uh, Alain was uh, chairing this, uh, this session uh, he couldn't be here, so that's why I'm here uh, on stage. So I, I, I have to admit that we were all uh, very happy with the first exchange, and then we really felt like doing something else. So uh, we didn't do the afternoon session and bring things together a little bit. So I do an attempt now to sort of, on behalf of my group, 
share some thoughts with the risk that they're also really biased by my own interest. Um, let's, let's start with a, a, a little anecdote here. Um, the thing is, is that, I don't know if you know the, the performance artist uh, and uh, performance artist work of Amina uh, uh, Abramovic. And um, I think I always use that as a reminder when working with technology. Uh, because we talk about this interrelationships with people a lot, we talk about social VR, uh, we talk about um, having uh, presence uh, and embodiment, and I always remind myself of her particular performance uh, in MoMA, where she sat for weeks and weeks, every day for hours, just sitting at a table, and people could sit opposite of her for a few minutes. And people had very profound existential uh, experiences. While she was in fact just sitting there, she wouldn't say anything, she wouldn't do anything, and the only technology I can see is mostly the light in the back, right? So it made me realize for a long time that this is a very important thing about presence, uh, and I thought it was really about her presence as a person that would somehow invoke all these emotional responses in the other. Until a very smart master student said to me, uh, well, I think it's not her presence, but it's the fact that she's really looking at you. She's really acknowledging your presence. And I think that is a very basic longing that we have as human beings. We want to be acknowledged by the other. So I think that was, uh, uh, I, I, I don't uh, give this example because I love it, but I think it's a good example of the nature of what we started from in our discussion, which is we wanted to really talk about not the technology, but human connection. And there was this one post-it that I really liked which said, no headset. <laughs> we don't want to have things in between if they're actually blocking that exchange. So uh, clearly art uh, uh, as, an, as a domain we feel is essential uh, to facilitate these, these uh, uh, questions and hopefully inspire future visions. But also, of course, we have a lot of practical knowledge on how to create them. So let's focus on people and not technology. And I'm happy that Mr. Slater has left the building so I can say some naive things about embodiment. <laughs> so we did do some work. Uh, we, we, we brainstormed and made our little mind map with uh, colors. And it's always interesting to do that uh, together. Um, and we felt we needed um, uh, actually just some sort of statement uh, to start with. So our central statement was art creates new perspectives. Uh, which is so obvious that you might think, like, why am I now waiting for this talk? Because, I, you know, we know this. Um, but it was a good start, because I think um, that this is really the role that art should take in these kind of interdisciplinary dialogues, especially in the future vision. And this removing barriers has to do with trying to get rid of everything that is sort of blocking <laughs> any kind of connection. So, we started from that. And then uh, said, okay, so if we can provide new perspectives, for whom then are we providing and why would you actually provide new perspectives? So, of course, we talked about the type of users, right? So our target groups. And, of course, you have people who consume art, which are then participants or audience members or spectators or experiencers, as Robin Nelson likes to call them. Um, but, of course, we, also, we have the makers, uh, which we call developers, which is not necessarily a technical developer, but can also be a designer uh, or a content developer. Um, but also uh, the people who design the technology are developers, of course. So they're all, in a way, creative uh, um, uh, users. And then, of course, we have the researchers, and probably you can make up even more user groups that, that are in need of these new perspectives. So then we felt we have the non-artistic or non-cultural people that we want to work with, which are potential symbiotic collaborators. So that could be indeed industry, government, science, education, and maybe even religion. When somebody said that, there was a moment of silence and everybody felt very compelled not to discuss that subject. <laughs> <laughs> but it came back in the discussion again and again, which was very interesting, uh, I think. And then, of course, we talked a little bit about the enablers, so what enables these new perspectives. We can talk about it forever, but if you really want to do it in an exper experiential way and, and develop something, you need, of course, funding, and you need the right policy, technology, and knowledge. This was just for us to map, like, where, why are we having this conversation, and for whom. But the most important thing is, to, of course, then, then, so what is it we add? What, what are these new perspectives adding, and how? Well. 
through creative experience. Um, we talked a little bit about aesthetics, which doesn't necessarily mean it has to be beautiful, but it's about aesthetic experience, which is a different qualitative way of consuming something. We talked about content and forms. Um, and then, of course, we started to talk about presence. And uh, I, I saw similar distinctions already of the subject, the environment, and then the religion kicked in again, and we were like, yeah, hold on, there is no other. Right, there is no other, which was a statement actually made before already. So, so how, how to uh, stop talking about the other, the opposite, the avatar, uh, you know, it, it, it is all part of the same system. So how can we sort of, I, I just got a, a, a nice remark, uh, uh, how can we deal with bilocation? How can we be at two places at the same time? Because we are, we're in many places at the same time. And it's not another place, like you just mentioned uh, already this morning. So. Um, we talked a bit about uh, uh, perception, levels of interaction, the frames that people bring into the experience and how they determine what they actually see in experience. And it got really almost like a political philosophical discussion, uh, which you can have forever. Um, but I think what is important to mention that is that we were, as artists and designers, discussing the total freedom that technology seems to promise versus needing to design restrictions or aids or meaningful <coughs> boundaries. So that's a bit contradicting a little bit what I said. We want to break all the boundaries, get rid of the boundaries. But endless possibilities is equal to nothing. So it's also in the resistance of things that don't work that you can actually have an experience. You're probably already thinking this. Yeah, what's new? <laughs> you know, these are so obvious statements. Uh, which, of course, we realized after an hour as well, that this, is, you know, this is, has been true and it will be true forever. Um, so, just to maybe uh, summarize, <laughs> um, uh, more like a statement, that we feel that art and artists should play a role, uh, but maybe we can be a bit more precise about that role is, because we have this wonderful art exhibition, the Echo Verso exhibition, we have artists being rewarded and recognized, uh, but uh, I think art uh, in itself as a domain can actually facilitate or intermediate collaborations. So it's not that the artist gives only a new interesting perspective by the artwork, but it can actually also has a lot of knowledge about facilitating the actual process. So art uh, can contextualize the overlapping of fields. Um, so it's not only about the technology or the political issue, but it can give a, a, a context of being together. It offers very practical, practice-led interdisciplinary methods of working, I can tell you. Right? There's a long history in art of interdisciplinary collaborations. We have methodology for that. <coughs> so being not afraid of making mistakes is also an important one. I think artists are completely comfortable of making a lot of mistakes, which is maybe in industry and science also true, but not as allowed or you know, uh, uh, wished for. And I think we're also perfectly comfortable to start from the not knowing. We first like to create space before we start filling it with ideas, right? So if you're already full, how on earth can you make up something new? You know, the glass on the wall and stuff. <laughs> okay, so I think artists have, and especially performing artists, have a very interesting understanding of embodied knowledge and subjective experiential validation as part of a process of, a process of exploration, invention, and innovation. Yeah, so it's the qualitative and subject uh, sub subjective aspect of experience that is should be a part of the research and the development of new forms of, of uh, experience. And finally, of course, yes, we can offer inspiration through our artworks, but maybe more importantly, we can, through the art process, offer a process of co-creation through these creative experiences. So I hope we can come next year again, and we're really happy to be here. Thank you very much. Thank you.